want to show you a before and after off the bat so you know what we started with and what the final product ended up looking like so you understand as we go through kind of the process of what we had to do to achieve this. The first thing we had to do is take off the backsplash that is already there. It was really easy to do, but we also weren't too concerned about damaging the walls. We did have to do some patching after, but it wasn't too bad. We just used a hair dryer to get the adhesive melted a little bit and then a crowbar and screwdriver on some parts to pop it off. Some sections did crack like these really long ones and then others were okay coming off. But it was really easy and then Scott did just go ahead and patch the holes. Then you're going to take off all your face plates, off your outlets, and you're going to pull those boxes out. Be careful when you do that. Maybe watch a, another video on how to do that safely. <laughs> and to install the tile, you're just going to use a tile adhesive, spread it on the wall, and then you're going to make the little grooves with the trowel and stick on the tiles. Ours was pretty easy to do as in terms of everything was already level and we didn't have to worry about matching up too many patterns, things like that. We did just go with the basic half sort of tile print for subway tile. I'm not really sure what it's called, but we did everything on a half line and I really do love how it turned out. We started on this little section here because we knew if we made mistakes, it wouldn't be like the worst and where we're, our eyes are always going. And like we've said, this is our first time doing tile, so it's not perfect. Be kind in the comments. Um, we obviously know where we made mistakes and you'll probably see them too, but it's okay. I still love how it is. <laughs> I just wanted to show that when we did do the back butter, we still left those little groove lines on the adhesive to make sure that it stuck properly to the wall. As you're installing, make sure you are going over and wiping off any excess adhesive that comes into the grout lines or onto the tile. There was definitely a few areas that we didn't do this and it was not the funnest thing having to chip it off before we did the grout. And this area around the doorway was definitely not the easiest thing to do especially once Scott had to make a bunch of little groove cuts for around the trim. And Killian insisted on installing all these little lower pieces for us.
One thing I insisted on was having full tiles at the ceiling. So in order to achieve that, Scott had to cut a piece of tile horizontally to fit in this area here. So this area is too small to fit a full tile and we just made one a little smaller and honestly you guys you cannot tell unless you're looking for it so if you have this situation where you want floor to ceiling tile but you also want full tiles at the ceiling then this could work for you depending on the tile that you choose <music> One thing that I wanted to talk about is why we chose subway tile. Why did we choose something that is already considered going out of style when we are putting it into our kitchen? So personally, I think our kitchen is already kind of outdated and out of style. It has old black granite. No one is doing black granite. We have old cabinet doors. Um, again, we had our cabinets painted when we bought this house. So they were like a dark cherry. So they're already kind of out. And I personally would rather have everything kind of look like it was purposeful and built at the same time versus having older cabinets and granite and putting in like a super trendy like mosaic gray and marble tile or something like that. I hope that makes sense. Not to say that like you shouldn't do that yourself. I just personally don't like the look of something trendy with old or outdated stuff. So I think it just looks better and kind of flows better if everything kind of looks like it was done at the same time. I think that makes sense. The other reason is we love the look of a craftsman style house and that's kind of what we're trying to make the inside of our home look like between our pantry which is like a very like almost bakery look with the brick and open shelving and the trim that we do on our windows and doors it's very craftsman and that's just what we're drawn to scott's cousin has a it's over a hundred year old true craftsman house in los angeles and when we walked in there for the first time we fell in love with this place and their kitchen is very similar to this it has like a true subway tile floor to ceiling it's just beautiful to us and that's kind of what we are going after and that's the look that we wanted to achieve so i will put in pictures because i just think it's so pretty and i want you to understand kind of our vision on our home and our kitchen and i personally think that it looks like this. I think we kind of achieved a craftsman style look by going floor to ceiling and having like the doorway trim added and all that fun stuff. So I hope this all makes sense. Again, the fun thing with owning a home and doing DIY is we all have different tastes and you might not like subway tile with black grout, but we love it and it works for our kitchen for the stage that it's in right now.
And while you're tiling, if you do find something that is just not working, as long as the adhesive didn't dry, then you can still pop the tiles off to correct any mistakes that you found. And because I know someone's going to ask, we spent about $450 total on this project. So for the tile alone, it was about $300 in the tile saw and grout adhesive, the tools, probably another hundred for those things. You can easily find tile saws on OfferUp. We got one on a major sale from Harbor Freight and the tile is from Home Depot. I'll have everything that I can find that we use linked below in the description box for you guys. And we have a lot of tile here. Most kitchens, you're not going to have this much. I think an average kitchen, you can get away with $150 to $200, depending if you're going to go up to the ceiling around your window, things like that. And same thing on this side, we thought we were going to have to make one of those smaller tiles work in order to get the full tile at the ceiling and countertop area. So we went up as high as we wanted with full tiles and then started going down from the ceiling because we knew if we had to make a small tile work, it would look better going around that window trim where it was busy and you would, your eye just wouldn't catch it. But of course, this wall worked and we didn't have to make a small cut. Don't worry, I know that you see that there's grout already. This is kind of ahead in the future. We had to wait about two weeks to finish this section of tile because we had to wait for this trim piece to get in stock. It's called a shoulder. You install it while you are applying the tile and the adhesive. It literally sits behind it. So we couldn't finish this until we got this and it just creates a nice edge when you don't have like a cabinet or a wall or a door frame. So we had to use this in a couple spots and it worked out really well. And the last little section to tile is these little tiny pieces where it's just too big of a gap to fill just with caulk or the grout. So we did do little tiny tiles under here. somehow lost the footage of me grouting so this is taken from my instagram page where i have full tutorials as well but follow the directions on the grout you choose but we went with a non-sanded charcoal grout and it's basically black the grouting process was super easy you just go in these like diagonal patterns you don't want to go straight across the tile unless you have to if it's in like a tight area 
this just makes sure that you get it pushed in evenly so you want to push kind of hard to fill all the spaces and then you do just kind of remove the excess as you go you'll let it dry for about 15 minutes and then come with a wet sponge and wipe off the excess grout until you get the line the thickness you want and don't worry about how dirty it looks you want it that way you'll come back later and literally just wipe it off you can clean it up as you go, but I found it easier to let it dry and then wipe it off. And you'll see me do that later. You'll know that it's ready to clean off when it kind of turns to a powdery consistency and you can literally just wipe this off with a paper towel. I did go through like a light cleaner, basically just water and clean it up as well. On the area between the cabinet and the tile, I did go in with a sanded color matched grout caulk and you'll see me do that here you use it just as you would use normal caulk and again super messy but it does clean up pretty well you just have to get it while it's still wet reminder of what we started with before all of the kitchen projects took place and how it looks now in our kitchen it's so much brighter it's clean looking and I absolutely love it so here's just a series of before and afters because I think it's just so cool to watch the transformation just wanted to thank you for watching this video. I hope it gave you some inspiration to do a project in your own house. And if you were looking for a specific step or question that I didn't answer, leave me a comment or message me on Instagram and I promise I will get back to you. There is some stuff that I might have missed or forgot to mention and I can admit that. So just let me know and I am more than happy to help you with your own tiling project to an extent. Again, this was our first time doing it, so we know a little bit more now than we did going in. But again, thank you for watching. I'll see you guys on the next one.